we don't take input uh, oh yeah sorry i just got distracted uh there was a message on recordings okay so but we don't specify take it from cli and we don't pass it from a cli layer to notation goal layer so we don't support that so like yeah i agree that we can, should do it it's like the question like should we def remove the default number of signatures limit and just rely on timeout quick question this is filed in notation go so either we close this issue and move it to the notation cli saying that the cli has no timeout option or maybe it doesn't or maybe the cli chooses a default that might be good enough does that make sense yes i agree that I can move the issue to different repo, but this I'm going to take a call there because right now we are implementing a 50, 50 signature default, max 50 signature default. I see. This the, is the default inside notation go? Yes, which which would be overridden from there, but the yeah, default is inside notation go. Yeah, and we should move the default from notation go to somewhere else. I agree. Yeah, I don't so. think notation go <laughs> should have a default that maybe it can recommend like use default uh, signature count or something like you can have a constant that people can pass in but library itself yes. maybe okay but is this something for rc1 though or i'm like if we're like there has to be a way if we are setting default signature i would prefer time or it's like we like either we have to provide even configurable signature 50 default value or i'm not sure how it will work that has to be configurable, right? It's just that I'm worried about the experience which we will give it because even if you say 50 signatures, if it's, if I have slow CPU, if it's taking 10 minutes, I will abandon in that. It doesn't help me. So it's like from end user perspective, timeout makes more sense as compared to number of signatures. Notation is verifying. Yeah, I think the CLI could pass in, okay, this is my default of 50, or I want to kind of bail out in like, uh, yeah. 15 seconds or 10 seconds and whichever hits first is good enough. Uh, wouldn't that be, yeah. I'm sorry, um, is there, if it bails off, then is there an error that is thrown it, on the- It's an error, CLI? basically, yeah, it is an error, right? You're not able to verify the entity yeah. somehow, either within the specified time duration or, so. so the point is, uh, we went through a couple of discussions here. Basically, we think of it as audit errors, like val validating a signature could be considered as an audit error or in Gatekeeper, you want to do a fail. That's also possible, but Notation Go enables both. So the consumer can decide, I want to pass in a timeout and I want to pass in a default. Um, but And that would be on the caller side. Uh, Shue, is the default hard-coded in Notation Go right now? Uh, yes. Uh, but it's uh, it's optional, so okay. it's overridable. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then if notation client can specify. Um, I have a default of like what, ten seconds or something like that. There are defaults in Docker CLI also like this, right? Like putting a manifest has a five second default and things like that. So I think that's fair. Um, so the client can have these same defaults like. Okay, 50 or 10 seconds or 50 or 15 seconds or something like that and document that out might be easy. So is there any opposition from moving from number of signatures default to timeout? So no, moving from limiting number of signatures to limiting based on time, is there any objection against that? I was recommending both, not either. Oh, uh, either. both, okay. Whichever hits first, that's yeah, what I said. Whichever I hits mean, it, it will be more concerning and more, if we provide more options, more confusing for user. Like then we'll have to have a really default value for default signatures. Oh, so the so, the, so your concern is basically you don't want the default signature count. It's not about CPU, right? So um, I, I think you only want to honor by time. Yes. Because that's the most that's the most user scenario. That is like most appropriate user user experience, right? Usually, user won't doesn't care how many signatures are there. If it if verification doesn't succeed in ten minutes, just abandon it. 
even if you have reached 49 signatures, even if I have 500, I don't want to go through all of them. And like, they, so if if not in notation, there will be timeouts somewhere before that. Yeah, but but we typically have like uh, my past experience is that you always have multiple gates here. Time number of signatures is one. Time is one. Size of payload is one. Uh, signature size. You have multiple different ways, right? Like when you pull it, if the manifest is beyond a particular thing. So I think there's a bunch of these gates that kind of apply. So I don't know. I I would leave it to. Uh, this is more like a use case question, and I don't have much of a recommendation there. So I'll actually. It's it's, it's after the PM. Uh, I still prefer the number of signatures because once the number of fixing signatures are fixed, the time out is also fixed. Uh, it won't uh, yeah, go forever. Uh, I w like if it's not if it's a slow network, then it might take much more time with 50 signatures, but yes. No, but we're saying both. So you should be able yeah, to specify it, timer also. And if you but, really don't want to keep the time number then, of signatures, yeah, then then what's your default value? Uh, what's the default acceptable default value? Then what's your default? Yeah, first number of signatures. Then we need to have a reasonably higher value there. Which like someone needs to do an experiment to figure out the a default signature value and default timeout are somewhat that, insane. That is, that, that is why I was suggesting to have the defaults inside <laughs> notation because it's a CLI that's released, right? And then the CLI chooses a default of like 10 or 50 and it has a default timeout of about 10 seconds. Whereas a library has no defaults that way. So if it hits the max 50, the then it's stopped. Like it won't go and scan for more signatures? Uh, yeah, I mean, that is one option. If So it breaks because 50 signatures is quite a lot in my opinion. Um, and we could tell them like, if you have more than 50 for RC1 prune, uh, or if you want more, then we take this as feedback and fix the CLI as needed. At least we'll get feedback. For me, this looks like RC2 scope. The reason is, um, I don't know, because uh, we spoke about the filtering of signatures uh, through the trust store itself is an RC2 scope. And now we are talking about the timeout and the default. Should it be in RC2 score? I, I don't, I don't, I wasn't kind of trying to pull this into RC2. On the contrary, I was suggesting that if we move this to the CLI, we can revisit it in RC2 and uh, lock it down even more because the libraries don't have defaults then. I agree there. Let's make it at least notation go. Let's not have a default there, and we can have a default in CLI layer. Yeah. It's always easier to introduce defaults later. Taking it out is harder, especially in a library. Um, yep, I agree there. <laughs> uh, so, from CLI side, currently, uh, I, I still, I, I mean, do we need to support both for RC1 and uh, give a default behavior, or we just, uh, for RC1, we just uh, uh, use the max number of signatures. For example, by default 50, we, uh, if user want to configure it, user can uh, do it according to the documentation, but otherwise it's uh, 50 signatures. Maximum. My understanding is that somebody will have to go write the code to implement the timeout and test the timeout. That's a new item. so. It, I think we should cost it first. If it's very cheap, then we can add it on, but more and more. Okay, so from a library side, we need to support both. And the time library side, I time. understand. My understanding is both is supported. Uh, but Ishwe, can you correct me if the number of signatures is an argument or is it hard coded? Uh, it's, it's, a, a, uh, it's an option, it's a verification option. Okay, so that means that's already there in the library. Timeout is also supported because it takes in a context with the timeout context. So the notation needs to pass in a default timeout okay. if it needs it. Does it make sense? Yes, I'm still questioning, uh, do we have a use case for default number of signatures? I agree because once we support it, we need to support it for future. I'm just thinking out loud here. It's like, if we do have a use case, 
I think Feynman uh, brought up a good question. Is there a validation timeout in Ratify? <laughs> uh, yeah, so right now it does. Uh, I believe this is one of the things that I let me follow up on this because uh, Gatekeeper has timeouts. So we need to respond back in a specific thing and we kind of like short circuit and say we weren't able to validate it if uh, it's not supported. And that's how it works. Um, and yeah, even 15 seconds is too much. So, Toddy, go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, my question is if, for example, Gatekeeper has a timeout, why do we need to support it here, right? The library needs to support it so that we can short circuit it. So if notation is outgoing with like some routine uh, and we need to tell notation that, okay, the, your quota of time is up, we short circuit it and then we respond back saying we couldn't validate it in time. That's why the okay. library needs to provide an option to take in a time. So I would not care about the notation CLI here. Even if it has a default, it doesn't matter. Um, Just to kill the thread, right, right. Sajan? Yeah. Right. Yeah, from like yeah, I, I agree there with you on that. I'm just saying that for CLI, should we? I agree with you. We should have a timeout. I'm just sure about the second part. Do we need a default number of signatures in CLI exposed? If we expose it, we cannot take it back after RC one. But we can always introduce it in new as a feature post RC one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a question before you guys answer, Pritesh. Uh, going back to Toddy's thing, right? We have a timeout in Gatekeeper. So ideally, it should be end to end, right? Carrying over the timeout through Radify and then to this. We cannot have a different timeout values. And how do you sync up that values, right? It's, it's not yeah. possible because it's different defaults everywhere. Cannot be disconnected. It should all be connected. How do we make sure it's all connected when you're doing end to end? Yeah, I think what, what uh, Sajay is saying, if the library supports a timeout that can be configured externally, Ratify can actually set this timeout when it calls the, uh, the library. For the CLI, it's more on kind of on the, uh, depending on the scenarios where we will use the CLI. So one is the manual scenario where actually timeout may be higher uh, the other one may be scenarios where you do a uh, uh, build uh, verifications. Like, for example, I'm taking a base image from somewhere and I want to verify the signature. Then we need to think what is a uh, meaningful one as a timeout, right? And that yeah. can be much higher than, for example, Ratify. Correct. Because Ratify needs to be very performant in order to do those things. As far as I remember, they were like, three seconds or or or, or something yeah, like this in, yeah, in gatekeeper. gatekeeper seven seconds yeah, which yeah so totally is... seven seconds right Sajan? right totally so, yeah so so actually i was thinking a bit more on this what cli takes a timeout today can somebody say any example of a cli that takes a timeout besides curl and pure raw sctp apis no but uh, one of the things that i notice in some clis is just hanks Right, so is is our that, approach so like control C to, to break it, or or should we put a like okay, it's five minutes timeout, which is like reasonable amount. If nothing happens in five minutes in a computer, then something is wrong. Right, so that's why a default would be hard because it's going to be it'll be hard to override it. Right, you know, you yeah. if you yeah. have a slow system, then yes, it's going to take more time. But at least it'll finish it in four minutes, five minutes, or something. Uh, I can't think of a CLI experience where somebody can say, wait for signing for like five minutes. It's just a very weird, <laughs> weird experience. I've never then, seen a CLI. Yeah. As a user, I will think that this is performance issue. Somebody has to tune it, right? Right. That's, that's the customer experience, right? That's yeah. what I was wondering. Yeah. Where What is a CLI experience where the timeout actually is passed in? Is something somebody will have to decide. So, uh, to protect his question, I uh, that's why I said library is all I'm caring about because I think that's as a consumer, it's it's straightforward. We can pass in the defaults either way, and we can short circuit it. The CLI is a little bit more tricky because you would either have to specify some default 
And in some networks that default won't work. And then for them, you'll have to specify a way in which you can override them. So timeout might be, might be challenging just to design. Um, number of signatures is a default and you can override it with some number that's easy to specify also. Um, anyway, that, that's my two cents, but folks on the call, I think there's, there's a missing experience here. So I think we need to document the experience so, and uh, we can look at that for RC2 or after that. Uh, Pritesh, are you okay with that? I'm just worried about the long running process. If someone does, does it during the build system and they don't actually kill the client, it would be just like notation verify would be a bunch of thousands of processes running on their host and it would eventually bring, yeah. bring yeah, down exactly. the build system. I, I, I understand the concern, but I think we need a little bit more time to think it through. Uh, and it will be good with documenting the this this experience and see what will be a reasonable timeout. So, uh, so right now we are saying we will allow it to run it for ever, or like we want to put a really big value there. I'm just uh, it's all wrong forever because we have a fixed number of signatures to be verified, and we have actually TP timeout, so it won't run forever. It will stop eventually. But even before it hits that signature threshold. If the process itself, right, Pratesh point is if the process itself is running due to some other issues, right, um, some network issue or something. Yeah, if it's, it's, network, issue, if right? it's network issue, then it will time out. <laughs> hmm. so, so it will time out eventually. Uh, it maybe take 10 or 20, sec uh, 20 minutes, but it will stop eventually. Uh, if the uh, library invoker uh, has concerns, then uh, they can have a uh, timeout context and pass a timeout context to the notation go. And uh, uh, once it's timeout, uh, it, it will cancel the request to everything in the notation go. So, uh, folks, what are our next steps? Because we are five minutes over time. Or four hey, minutes. Oh, yeah, right. For four minutes, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, I think, Pratish, uh, what, what do you want to take with this conversation? I don't know. It's just that I'm trying to see the use cases here. We might want to come up with the use case and what can be supported and what cannot be supported right now. Uh, is it not if the overall SLA is, for example, seven seconds, if, if the process runs more than seven seconds, it should terminate even without the timeout? Something like that, Pratish? Yeah, that's what my idea was even for CLI. Hmm. Uh, sorry. Uh, because uh, yeah, even the number uh, of signatures can be. Sorry. Please go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I think we are all agree that on the library side, right? Support both options is just the CLI behavior. I think for the CLI behavior, we can discuss later. Okay. Sorry, on, do we want to support the number of things on library side? Uh, I think if we, both, do that, we cannot both, take it back. That's uh, what I'm saying. Even if, like, if you support a feature on library, you also cannot take it back in future. Uh, I don't think we should support a default uh, a value of a timeout in the library side. Uh, and and then we already support timeout in the library, just not having a default value. Okay. And number of signatures, we want to keep it, but we, it has to be explicitly specified by caller, right? A pardon? For number of, it's like for number of signatures, the max number of signatures, which we will verify it will be passed as an input to the function right uh yes and but there's no I, default there uh we have a default of 50. should we, should we remove the default mm. at least for rc1 and then agree on the default in rc2 yeah. uh yes possible uh but uh if there is uh, what's behavior if we don't have a default value 
And uh, you, all, you have to take in a number. I'm saying there is no default. It's a required option. That's interesting. <laughs> Trust me, I'm, I'm I'm from the service side, right? I do I hate defaults. I just cannot understand defaults that make the system <laughs> give you a behavior depending on resources. So it's I'm I'm all okay with if we can pass in a value as a, as a requirement. How 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 this would change the signature, right? In some way, or is it an option that is taken as, as a struct? Uh, it's taken an option as a struct, so it's oh. okay. Oh, okay, so you'll have to validate the struct. That that's it's okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it's okay. And we can have something like if, if it's a negative value, which means infinity. I mean, just don't have the max signature. So okay, so basically, if the user pass zero or negative value, we will reject an error. <laughs> yeah, and that way, notation CLI can pass in a value, ratify can pass in a very large value if it wants to. But you have a guarding timeout that they so both of it will kind of like fall through. Yeah. Isn't zero infinite or minus one? Uh, I don't think we should support infinite. Uh, <laughs> it uh, I mean, I think we can do that if we rely on just the timeout, then we don't, they don't even care about the number of signatures. If you just rely on the timeout, they don't even care how many signatures they will verify before, let's say 15 Four. minutes or whatever value they have. You have a super fast computer with super fast uh, network. Two minutes can verify a lot of stuff. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. If if they are relying on timeout, they don't even they might not even care about number of signatures that has been verified. They just care okay, if I can verify a signature in let's say two minutes, it's fine. If we can just cannot abandon the workflow. So I I, I see only one kind of reason we want to limit that, which is uh, eventually denial of service, where you actually try to do too many validations or actually create an image with hundreds and thousands of signatures. Is that what you have in mind, Pritesh? Or? Uh, uh, no, yeah. but I'm just saying that uh, user controls it. If they say, I want to wait two minutes, they just want to wait two minutes for signature verification to complete, not more than that. And in two minutes, if you can verify five signatures, if you can verify 50, user doesn't even care. He just wants to wait for like two minutes. Just fail the process if, if it's more than two minutes. So, so put this maybe I can like share the con context that Docker, that container D folks actually mentioned in the call yeah, a couple of days ago. Uh, they actually wanted to limit how much they pull. Like, uh, so let's say your index gives you 500 signatures. Do you pull everything? Like you can potentially, but should you or should you not? You can do one referral response with like a hundred signatures if you want to, but do you want to kind of like follow every blob and then pull that? Continuity was of the opinion that they don't want to pull everything because they don't know how much of resources will be taken. Depends on the device, depends on what it is. So both models exist where you want to limit what you're pulling irrespective of whether it's a signature because even signature verification is CPU bound, right? So you have that and then you have the, how much time do I spend? I think both are equally important. Um, but that's another use case that that was discussed where container D as an implementation, they don't want to pull everything. And they're they have they have a they have a plugin model also where they're thinking of the plugin is going to register for some limits as to how it'll pull. And they want to tell the plugin this is how much you can pull and things like that. So my take is um timeout is only one pivot on this. Uh number is the other pivot as well, uh, from what I've yeah. heard. Yes, and yeah. also about memory usage. Uh, so, for example, if, if we limit it like two minutes, but if it can pull like uh, 10,000 signatures, it will cause the memory blow up. And because why it's blow up? Because it returns the all the outcome of all the signatures. If we have 10,000 signatures, we will have 10,000 outcomes. And that consumes a lot of memory. Uh, I would say that would be an implementation concern. You can paginate, you can do multiple things with that. You can return the output like in 100. Uh, like, even if it's paginated, all the output will be stored. 
Yes, and the caller will have to decide on what they want to do with first hundred. They just want to process, don't store them in memory or something like that. So that would be pretty like an implementation concern there. It depends upon how we want to implement it. Current implementation, yes, that would be out of memory error if we do with current implementation. I agree there. Just coming back to the point, do we want to support both the values as mandatory parameters or one can be op you can specify just one and not other, like timeout and max signature. Do we want to support both as mandatory or you can just pass one? And that will be the last question for the day. <laughs> Followed I'm with the uh, next question, right? Is it part of RC1 scope or <laughs> we move it to RC2? <laughs> I think we can take that call in next meeting on Thursday or next Monday, but yeah, I just want to close the discussion as we are already near that. So my suggestion was you can specify one and ignore other. I think Sanjay just sounds, think I, that his take is to support both as mandatory in the library and we can relax the requirements okay. later. That sounds good to me. We can just reserve the name space of negative values for future to making it like an optional. I agree with that. Good. Shivay, Femen, Yi. I think I agree at least from the client side, uh, sorry, the library side, we support both options and the uh, the user can pass uh, the value into the library. For for this part, I agree. Uh, just uh, mm -hmm. uh, for the for the notation CLI user experience. Uh, currently, I, I don't know. Maybe for RC one, we can just uh, use the uh, maximum numbers, and we can uh, refine it uh, after that. Yeah, I agree with Yi, but as a CLI user, I will start using uh, a CLI with the default settings for a new tool until I miss some problems. So for from my perspective, I still prefer we provide a default uh, timeout for uh, newbies and uh, with configurable option for them to update it. Even we have some concerns, but I think this is the easiest way for people, for newbies to start it, to start uh, using and learn uh, notation. Do we have to, I'm not sure we... if we have the clear understanding on the, on the requirements, right? Ritesh, I'm not sure if you got it all, I'm fine. I mean, I agree there, but the problem is if you start with default, you cannot lower the value. You can increase it. It's difficult to change the defaults. Uh, so, sorry, the default you mean in the library side or yeah, in no. the... No, the uh, I, for, for, for me, I, I think there is no default for the, for the library. Just the, in the CLI, we should have a... Anyway, have a required parameter, right? Because uh, there I needed to pass this value to the library because library, there's no default value for library. So, so there has to be a uh, default settings for the, for the CLI. To start, right? Uh, anyway, there should be an initial value for user to start, right? You, you cannot expect that uh, user to use it. Uh, you, you cannot ask a user to configure it before before using the uh, notation, right? There should be a default value somewhere. I agree that we should have a default value. Uh, do you want to take us take it as a ne in next meeting? We already have like we're already beyond the fifteen minutes. Uh, yeah, sure. We we can also do offline. 
chat because Gosh, the meeting is not uh, is is not uh, China friendly. Uh, so we can do offline chat. But uh, yeah. I, I think for for the library side, we agree that no default value for library and the library support both options. Yep, that sounds good. Yeah. Uh, is Cody there? Uh, I'm not sure. We can stay for more minutes. Maybe, Cody, we can. Uh, you can share some uh, something about the website and documentation. I I think this is more important. I'm okay, and uh, it depends on Toddy. <laughs> Uh, I think we can uh, drive this offline, but uh, my ask will be to uh, Pritesh and Vani and, and Samir to actually take a look at the proposals and if we can start moving those things to uh, agree on what exactly we would like to do with the, with the website. Uh, so uh, let's try to do this offline. We are almost 20 minutes over the meeting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one more ask I have to the team is if we can try to fit the meetings in one hour, uh, that will be good and go through the uh, actually agenda in one hour, maybe time boxing some of those conversations that we are spending uh, too much time, it will be good. So uh, that is kind of my appeal to everybody because I was supposed to drop off 20 minutes ago, but I decided that this is more important than the other meeting I have. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Tody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, there's one more item from protection. We can maybe we can do offline chat. Yeah, we can do offline chat. So we can or on Thursday or something like that or offline chat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I want to understand uh, uh, what is British concern on this uh, fraction second because uh, uh, in the spec we 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 will mention that uh, uh, for closely we we should not support the fractional seconds. Right. Uh, I can I can maybe jump on that. So the first thing was that my understanding was that uh, some libraries do not actually support fractional. Uh, okay. we in the in the uh, spec we wrote that it should not be fractional but that means that it will be if i decide to uh, which means that are we any expectations that will break somebody with that or not so i think that's kind of the overall question here and if uh, uh, the most common denominator is non-fractional why did we decide that we can allow fractional That's kind of the context or the line of thinking. And we can do that offline. Sure, sure. Sure, Tony. Thank you very much, yeah, for that explanation, yeah. We were looking for the use case there, why it should support or not support, yeah. Yeah, cool. Thank you all. You have a great day, great evening. Thank you, bye. Thank you, Or. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.